six here on the Business Breakfast. Now, of course, as you know, nearly two weeks ago, the UK went to the polls and voted to leave the European Union. But the numbers weren't consistent across the country. The Remain vote was higher in London, for example. In Scotland, 62% of the vote favoured staying in the EU, which has sparked calls for a second independence referendum and led First Minister Nicola Sturgeon to meet senior EU officials in Brussels. Well, to discuss what the Scottish business community is making of this and what may happen next, I'm joined by Gordon McIntyre Kemp, who's the head of Think Tank Business for Scotland. Good morning to you. Um, is, is Scotland on its own, do you think, a wealthy nation? Oh, for sure. And that's something that's, that's not denied. I, w- I was watching uh, Sky News uh, during the week and uh, George Osborne was on and he was asked uh, why the UK wasn't as wealthy as Norway. And he said, look, Norway's got a, an enormous amount of oil. It's got as much oil as we do and it's only got a population of four and a half million. Of course, we can't be as wealthy as, as Norway. I'm not sure he realised how his uh, remarks would go down in Scotland, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we have a, a very strong uh, onshore economy. We've had a dip in oil prices recently, uh, but we were told uh, that oil prices are volatile, so we can't expect oil price to stay down forever. Uh, but actually, our uh, onshore uh, economy has actually grown over the last few years, and uh, food and drink in particular is, is a, a huge um, uh, exporting sector for us, and it's up. Uh, exports in the food and drink sector are up 17.3% since uh, uh, 2010. When we were rehearsing all the arguments about Scottish independence, I remember the the figures about um, identifiable spending per capita uh, in Scotland is higher um, than it is in England, for example. Uh, And there's that old Barnet formula. Now, I know that was a bit of old political bribery all those years ago, but you would lose that, wouldn't you, should you decide to stay in the EU? Well, let's let's, let's not jump that far. Um, Have a second independence referendum. Are those still identifiably correct figures and, and, and concepts? Well, there's, there's a couple of issues. First of all, uh, Barnet wasn't bribery. It was actually the fact that we spent so much more in Scotland. Barnet was actually about uh, locking in not uh, a, a, a sort of cap on it, not allowing uh, Scotland to spend as much as it was spending. Uh, the other thing is that uh, various uh, contenders for the Conservative leadership have actually said that uh, as part of the post-Brexit deal that Barnet has to go anyway, Lord, Lord Dolan, uh, prior to the, the EU referendum, said that there would have to be a complete renegotiation uh, of the Scottish financing um, agreement, and that would include uh, Barnet. Now, one of the things that we were told during the, the, the 2014 referendum is that that was absolutely secure. Uh, we've just spent uh, a couple of years since 2014 renegotiating uh, the financial settlement for Scotland, and we're immediately being told it's about to be ripped up. Um, as for uh, the spending per head, well, Scotland has um, uh, over over a couple of generations seen uh, massive uh, migration of its own from Scotland to England, economic migration. I was brought up in the northeast of England, my own family. Uh, I still consider Hexham to be my hometown. Uh, and uh, my whole family moved out of Scotland for economic reasons. Uh, so you can't sort of have the, the, the pool of, of uh, overinvestment and centralisation in London uh, and the southeast pulling people from Scotland, then turn around and say, well, Scotland, as a result, uh, you don't have enough people to, to, to alter the per head uh, spending uh, in your country to make yourself viable. It's actually the reason that we have such a high spend is because so many people have been forced to leave Scotland for economic reasons. So and can I just add there that the northeast of England does much worse out of Westminster centralisation than Scotland. Uh, for every pound spent on infrastructure in the northeast of England, uh, London gets £24 spent on it. But northeast has no Scottish Parliament or no North East Parliament and no First Minister uh, batting for them and, and trying to stand up for them and, and that's one of the problems that, that my native North East of England suffers from. And, and so, so um, do, do you think in general therefore um, Scottish business is in favour of a second independence referendum and is also in favour of being um, an independent country within the EU? Well, it depends on how you look at business. In the the last referendum, small to medium-sized businesses that make up about 98% of the actual registered companies, probably a bit higher than that, uh, they tend to be pro-independence. Entrepreneurs were pro-independence, but the big PLCs, the London headquartered PLCs, spoke out against it because they wanted what they saw as stability. Uh, So we don't know where everybody sits nowadays. It's a completely new ballgame. The question that was asked in 2014 is a completely different question. The United Kingdom 
kingdom that existed then doesn't exist now. But for two reasons. One, the key argument against stability for a yes vote uh, was that we would be in the EU and, and the no campaign in 2014 told Scotland uh, in no uncertain terms that they actually produced a poster that said, what is the route for leaving the EU? Vote yes. And they said, if you vote yes, you're out. If you vote no, you're guaranteed to stay in. Well, that guarantee has turned out to be a complete lie. And people in Scotland are, across every single political party, across the divide of, of yes, no, are, are actually not just disappointed, but pretty angry. Uh, there's also 177,000 EU residents in Scotland who weren't allowed to vote in the EU referendum, but did vote in the independence referendum and they were told in, during the independence referendum that they would have to go home if we voted yes, that they would be out of the EU and have to go home. So they almost, about 85% of them voted no uh, and they would almost all change to voting yes en masse uh, next time. So the polls are now sitting at around about 55, one's as high as 60% uh, support of independence. But until the whole situation starts to calm down and we know exactly what deal Nicola Sturgeon gets out of, of Europe for Scotland, we won't really know where it's Gordon, I think this is going to be something we're going to be talking to you about very regularly uh, in the future. But for the moment, thanks very much for that perspective. That's Gordon McIntyre, uh, head of Think Tank Business for Scotland. It's 18 and a half minutes.